So Vijay Kumar and Mr. Prem from Space Society of Mechanical Engineers at SAC ISRO. They will be delivering a talk on advancements and challenges in the development of lightweight structures for space applications. So Mr. Vijay and Mr. Prem Pal, they will bring a wealth of expertise in the field of space engineering and lightweight structures. I hand over them. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, organizing committee and the university, Sika and uh, SSME for giving me opportunity to share my experience on light well structures, especially for space applications. So it is already too late, so I will try to finish uh, within 10 minutes. Uh, Yeah. So I will just briefly uh, describe the uh, Paradis Composite applications uh, here, uh, is happening. So. If you see uh, this presentation, uh, uh, from the defense to space and ground segments of uh, launch vehicles, satellites, uh, reusable vehicles, satellite and payloads, vessels, pressure vessels and energy applications, civil applications, sports equipments, marine applications, everywhere these composites are used. So in day to day uh, business also we can see the everywhere these composites uh, parts we are seeing even from the toothbrush morning session servers telling to uh, uh, in the, the uh, kids uh, this uh, toy car so everywhere it is composites is using yeah so basically uh, what composites is so it is a physical combination of two, uh, uh, two macroscopically items, fabric as well as resin systems, in which we are uh, taking the uh, best property of, of, out of both the uh, things. So one component is making from the composite, so it is having the uh, modulus property of the fiber and the load transfer property of the resin systems. So this is not the composites we are using the first time. So earlier uh, days also we are uh, using the composites. In Egypt times also they are using the composites. They are using in the mummy cases. They used in paper pulp for POPs, reinforced concretes, bricks of clay, uh, reinforced with the straw. Uh, all these things is an example of uh, composites. The lightweight structures uh, for space application, especially if you can see uh, the uh, the amount of uh, this investment is required for uh, launching a single kg of uh, payload. So if we are launching for a LEO mission, uh, one kg if we are saving the mass, it is $8,000 we are saving it. For if we are uh, launching for a GEO mission, we are saving $27,000 per kg mass we are saving. So if you are going for a lunar surface, it is 1.2 million per kg we are saving it. So Similarly to Martian surface, 2.7 million per kg we are saving. So one kg mass, if we are saving, we can save this much amount of money. So after all, all the money is our uh, taxpayer money, government money. So we should actually uh, try to focus how we can optimize our structures. So we have seen uh, 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 people who are making uh, who are making and designing the structures having a lot of margins. So we should concentrate on lowering the margins, just enough to survive our load cases so why composites this slide uh, itself uh, shows that is a tailorable property it is a very, very, very high specific stiffness very high specific strength and low density high energy efficient capabilities high suitability and uh, for space application the last two points is very three points are very important low position of thermal expansion dimensional stability in wide temperature excursion because in space we can see the temperature or uh, plus side it is up to 200 and negative side is minus uh, 250. So with these conditions it has to survive. So 
in oh, you can see the last uh, last one graph uh, the best optimum uh, property mm -hmm. we are getting from the cfrp composite even zero door material if you are seeing in negative it is, cycle it is not working here also deformations is very high so we have to go for a cfrp composites for highly dimensional stable, stable structures so it is not like that the composite is having only advantage it has having certain disadvantages also so you can see these are the disadvantages and we should choose the composite material accordingly everywhere we cannot use it see the same composite material if you are using for uh, deep space communication up to ku band cfrp it is well reflecting it is communicating but if you are going for more than that ku band there is more than 18 gigahertz frequency it won't work we have to go for a metallization either we have to use for a copper cladding or we have to use for a spectring method so that it can communicate so up to ku band it is work fine it will it will work cfrp but above that it won't work we have to go for a metallization so uh, we have to choose the material material accordingly so in use is very important where we are using it uh, this is one of the examples uh, uh, from uh, airbus boeing and airbus uh, uh, everywhere they are using the composites and you can see this uh, boeing uh, flights uh, all this blue material is composite so they, this is 2016 data so now they have almost um, converted 70% of the material into composites so uh, and percentage share of the composites uh, you can see this is the percentage share of composites uh, this data is up to uh, 2010 so everywhere you can see the composites market is there Uh, these are the basics uh, process which we are using for fabrication of composites uh, which thing i have highlighted in green color basically this processes we are using for fabrication of the components for space applications autoclave molding filament winding this uh, autoclave molding for structural applications filament winding uh, we are using it for uh, pressure vessel applications additive manufacturing slowly we are inducting but at uh, qualification still is going on it is not fully um, qualified so these are the Uh, methods we are using it uh, on coming to the uh, la launcher uh, we have already converted so many uh, components into uh, light wire uh, composite structures if you see from the top the pellet fairings isogrid pla this uh, pressure vessels uh, uh, nozzles then throat liners inter stages everything that uh, pellet fairing pellet adapters everything we have converted into composites now this top side launch vehicle mark 3 which is our now uh, biggest uh, launch vehicle and uh, its uh, capacity is 4 ton to the payload for uh, gto orbit so uh, that the payload fairing is made of fully composites that is called ozai composite uh, fairings in composites also earlier we are using kevlar gas bottles but now we have converted kevlar to carbon also so this that way also mass saving we have done it so for space applications basically we categorize this composites into majorly three categories one is the structural composites which are mainly used for making the structural elements like plas reflectors solar panels antenna reflectors sadakon mechanism uh, yoke this is yoke which is used for uh, uh, mounting the solar uh, array drive assemblies second is filament wind composites this com this uh, products we are using for uh, pressure vessels where uh, very high pressures Uh, operating is required there we are using the filament wound pressure vessels then third one is ablative composites where a high temperature application is required there we are using ablative composites this is one of the case study uh, for any composites manufacturing uh, first design and simulation is very important so what uh, we do from the design we take take the uh, how it will work so performance we are evaluating what is the time is required for uh, readiness of that product that is time to market and what is the cost involved involved in that work so we are all this accessing from the uh, analysis then development risk that uh, what is the risk involved for developing such a certain type of material so we are using these three uh, from this simulation part so these three uh, uh, space component design if you see the uh, last three points design for aeration launch loads on our road conditions these are the cases which we are designing for any component for our space structures this all thing is possible uh, thanks to fpa tool this is patron nastron abacus nx siemens ensis these are the tools that we are using it for the simulation so in the uh, space applications any product which we are uh, making it is qualification and uh, this process flow is very stringent 
so we have to go for all these processes and we have to uh, uh, give the checkpoints every stages so that we should not void any norms we should not accept any other uh, material which is uh, which is going uh, going to no one will defect after assembly so we are respecting in the uh, in between this process flow so uh, coming to the uh, uh, characterization of the materials for specific applications we have uh, the, uh, I've, I've shown only a few uh, qualifications as per for uh, raw, uh, raw materials and product per se but it is, the list is very large so all these tests we are doing it before accepting of any materials uh, tensile, compressive, shear, analysis, these are for the prepaid materials uh, lab shear strength for adhesive material flat wash tensile test, PE test, uh, flat wash for sandwich materials PE test varying for the coating materials then environmental test. This is the one of the uh, tests that we have to do uh, for uh, on-orbit conditions like outgassing. Uh, this material should not uh, outgas in the outer space condition, in deep vacuum conditions. So this test we have to perform in, uh, by total mass loss, TML, CVCM and WBR tests. Then we have, we have to test for CTE. So all these spacecraft structures, uh, these components are very highly stable. So we have to go for a CTE measurement. So the CT measurement should be near to geo. So we are using such type of material which is having the CT is very least. Then CME. CME also is a very uh, stringent uh, test so that uh, any uh, deformation should not happen uh, uh, due to the moisture. Then TZ is one of the uh, important tests. From product level, we see this. Uh, these are the tests that we are doing it uh, as a product qualification. NDT at every stages, thermal baking we are doing it, thermal vacuum cycling we are doing, doing it. Vibrations, sign, randoms, then quasi static load conditions, acoustics we are doing it, appendages, appendages test we are doing it, and geology test we are doing it. This is as a product level we are doing it. This is the advanced technology fusion uh, actually our other centers are using. This is basically when doubly curved surface are there, complex curved surface are there, where we cannot use directly manual uh, layup. So, what we are doing it, we are cutting it. Uh, in a prepaid cutting machine and then we are laying up uh, with respect to this laser projection uh, uh, guide uh, guide machine. So in, what is the advantage of this uh, technology? This better accuracy we are achieving. It is up to point, point 0.1 degree, within point 0.1 degree we can align the fibers. Then fast layer process, no misalignment, fully automated process. So this is a major actually advancement in our resource centers. This is uh, this is one of uh, one of the method uh, for curing technology that also we are using it for uh, uh, making the uh, lower thickness products like the reflectors, solar panels. We are using this for curing techniques. What we, what happens uh, in this techniques? Both the top skin and bottom skin of a sandwich structure we are curing simultaneously with the core. In this number of parts is reduced, curing cycle is optimized, process lead time is optimized, and pre-stress we are minimizing it. So this is the, uh, one of the process that we are following uh, at our ISO centers. Coming to the uh, one, one more uh, process that is actually uh, uh, nowhere people are using it. This is the reticulation process. This is basically aerial mass density of the film adhesive we are reducing it. So if you see a panel, solar panel size is on more, it, gone up to, it has gone up to meters, means 3 to 4 meters and uh, width will be around 2 meters. So that much area, if you use the film adhesive and the core cell size is very large. So what will happen is this most 90% of the adhesive will be unused. That is, that is lying between the core. So what you, we are using, we are removing the unused adhesive and only the adhesive which is lying on the core uh, shell area, that only we are retaining it. This is the process is called reticulation. So again one more uh, advancement, we are doing it uh, in carbon carbon area. See, there is the spacecraft recovery experiments we have done in 2007. Actually, this was the one of the major uh, actually goal we have achieved. But that time, that much technology was not there. Uh, that social networking was not there. That's why it was not published too much. It was uh, spacecraft recovery experiments. This uh, this satellite we have already a uh, uh, cup cone flare shape. We have sent to the space, and it has done the macro gravity experiment for seven days, and then it has returned back to our Earth. So. If you see this uh, that um, uh, round portion that one, top one, that is uh, made from carbon fiber. Later we have in SR2 missions, we have converted it into uh, carbon carbon. So all this uh, landing gears, everything we are making in carbon carbon. 
this error this uh, not issue is making this is from aerospace industries are making coming to the future advancement in manufacturing uh, these are the scope of uh, improvement uh, we can go for automation so that we can reduce the tooling costs improve power performance light weighting damage tolerances fail safe design we can go for in quality assurance we should be uh, targeting for product repeatability we should be ensuring process standardization we should be going for and uh, scalability this is one of the most important topic coming to the uh, again uh, from the raw material per se this is the proper 3d fiber reinforcement braiding etc that we should be using for structural components automated tape laying fiber placement uh, that also should be will be targeting and liquid molding technology especially for non auto clay like rtm wire process we should be targeting for aspis component now generally we are using for auto clay curing process it is very costly so we should be targeting for uh, such type of pyrosis system which can be cured without uh, application of auto clay then uh, new sandwich technology like oh, which can give us the acoustic damping so if you see the uh, figure like uh, right one that is that the structure is 5 to 6 meter uh, diameter and it is uh, free from the acoustic um, damping so also this uh, this rain system which we are uh, they are used in this um, particular product is flexible kind of nature so it can be foldable and it can be used uh, during the launch condition and then it can be later deployed in on orbit conditions then uses of smart self filling materials so that also we should, uh, we should concentrate uh, um, on uh, self filling materials so if any minor damage it uh, happens it should heal itself this is basically this uh, lattice type structures uh, we call it as hybrid structures we are using in uh, this uh, uh, we just below the cryo stage we are using this type of uh, lattice structure and and product also we are using uh, this coilable uh, structures so that uh, uh, efficiently we can save the mass now this uh, new concepts are trending uh, nowadays is doping so in composites so we should be targeting for doping also see cnd is having the uh, property which we are looking for but along cnd we cannot use it so we have to use it in the, uh, within our uh, carbon fiber so this doping uh, we, uh, if you are introducing we are getting the property which we we will be requiring for this specific applications then joining techniques this uh, that this also uh, i was uh, telling earlier also uh no matter what the film receives now it is in market it is available it is high it is curable in a high temperature conditions temperature conditions that is not only it is costly of there so we are targeting to develop such a type of film receive which can be cured at a lower temperature then new research uh, uh, we should be focusing on damage tolerances and repair uh and the last whatever this composites we are using it we should be able to recycle it so this these are the challenges during the uh, recycling we are facing it long or short fibers glass fiber or carbon fiber high cost is involving so these are the recycling process people are using it chemical polymer emissions pyrolysis mechanical extrusion shredding grinding extrusion wire washing and thermal insulation that this is a process basically worldwide they are people are using and one uh, internet tech in the usa is there actually uh, they are having a, a agreement between boeing and uh, airbus for recycling of aircraft components so what they are using it they are using a cat they are property catalyst heat and pressure uh, with composites so by product it is coming as a adhesive and adhesives and fiber that adhesive they are using for a wooden industries for uh, joining of the wooden products and fibers they are recycling it so this this is a pilot scale reactor actually uh, full scale they are uh, going on development is going on and this is the incineration process which widely used uh, in our exo centers for decomposing of the uh, com composites these are the few references thank you